in this example, I know I'm going to have to use logarithms because my unknown is in the exponent. So how do I know I use logarithms? My unknown is in the exponent. There are other ways, but a logarithm will always work. So for the purpose of this video, we'll stick to using logarithms. Okay, and again, I'm going to use the same method as I did um, the last time. I'm going to take a log on the left, and I'm going to take a logarithm. Let me just make some space there. I'm going to take a long time to delete that. Okay, sorry. I'm going to take a logarithm on the right. So I'm taking a logarithm on the left and a logarithm on the right. Okay, remember, since in the beginning these two were the same values, they were equal. It means if I put them into the same thing, I will get the same output. Okay, they're all, they're all the same. So, from here, I see I can multiply my exponent to the front. But please take note there, my exponent now has got two terms. So, my coefficient now is two terms. Please don't forget the brackets. The whole exponent is multiplied with the log. 1 comma 4. On the right hand side I'm just going to leave it as it is. Logarithm of 9. And again I want to get x minus 1 on its own so I divide with, I want to get x on its own so for now let's just get rid of that factor that's multiplying the bracket I want on its own. So there we go, a log 1 comma 4 divided on the left, log 1 comma 4 divided on the right. Now please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when you do see this, it is not possible for log to cancel with log. There's no such thing. Log by itself means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Just like a, a DVD player on your computer is absolutely worthless if there's nothing in it. Okay, it means nothing by itself. So it cannot cancel by itself. Okay, so we cannot cancel logs by itself. Neither can we cancel anything that's inside the log um, with anything outside the log. Okay, so what's inside that log can only be affected by the logarithmic laws. Okay, so, but what I can do is since this whole thing is the same as that whole thing they can cancel, of course, because they are their numbers, and those two numbers will in the end cancel with each other. So I've got x minus 1 remaining and on the right hand side I've got the log of 9 that is being divided by the log of 1 comma 4. So let's evaluate that. So we've got 9 log... So your calculator might have a different typing order. You might have to first type in log 9 divided by 1.4 log is equal to 6,53. I'm rounding to two decimal places this time. 6,53 is my answer. Okay. This example is a classic case where we can't just go ahead and take the logarithm on the left and the logarithm on the right without first considering what we need to do. So let's just go back to the beginning. If I want to write something in the logarithmic form, or as a logarithmic equation, I first need it as an exponential equation. Now that simply means that my base and exponent is alone on the one side. There's no coefficient there. There's no other terms. There's just the base with the exponent. So actually what I'm trying to solve is I'm trying to solve this a to the power x. I'm trying to get that whole thing on its own. Just like I would try and get x on its own. Or y on its own. Now I'm trying to get the whole base and exponent on its own. So one way of doing this 
is to say, okay, let's just for for the, the sake of making it a little bit simpler, let's make 2 to the power x equal to y. Or anything you choose. Y, Z, whatever your name is. I, I, I'm going to use a P. Alright, the letter P. Okay, so instead of 2 to the power x, I'm going to write P. 3P is equal to 10. And now my aim is just going to be to solve for P first. Okay, so it's quite easy. Divide by 3 on both sides. Divide by 3. And I get P is equal to 10 over 3. Now that's 3, 333333. 3, 3, 3, 3. um, I prefer leaving it like that. That looks better. Now, I've got P on its own. So let's substitute back. I've got my base and exponent on its own. 2 to the power x is equal to 10 over 3. And now I can go ahead. Take a logarithm on both sides. The log of 2 to the power x is equal to the log of 10 over 3. The x gets multiplied to the front, which now leaves me with x log of 2 is equal to log of 10 over 3. Good. And now I can divide with my log of 2 because now I want x on its own. I have now the ability to get x on its own. Sorry, not log of 3, log of 2. Okay, on the right hand side, that whole thing cancels. Remember, not log and log and 2 and 2. No, that whole thing is actually one unit, one part. So x is simply equal to, let's evaluate that log of 10 over 3 divided by 2. So I must take 10 divided by 3 first and get an answer. I take log of that answer and I divide it by log of 2. So 2 log. And my answer is rounded to two decimal places. I'm going to look at the third place, that's a 6, which means this is closer to 40 than it is to 30. So it's 1,74. And since I've rounded, let's just use our curly brackets. 1,74. That's my solution.